<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You all look good. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to be here again. You all look happy. Great. We all seek happiness. We all want to be happy. As a matter of fact, our conversation last week on tipping on your mind was really successful because I got messages and responses from those who applied it in their life and they were able to come up with good results that could help them to get results and some benevolent and give back from nature and the universe in whole. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. All men seek relationship to the universal mind. The over soul or the internal spirit which we call God, the creator of the heaven and earth, the creator of man and the life giver which we must all give credit to. And life reveals itself to whoever is receptive to it that we are living in a spiritual universe which includes a material or physical universe. And this has been a conclusion of the deepest thinking of every age that this spiritual universe must be one of pure intelligence and perfect life dominated by love by reason and by power to create and this seems to be an inevitable conclusion isn't it why right. there is a power in the universe the harness our faith in it there is a law in the universe which exact the utterance fathom have you discovered it we all wish to feel that power behind everything and i'm telling you that power behind everything is a good power as well as creative and eternal and changeless intelligence in which man lives and moves and has been has his being intuitively intuitively sorry we sense that every man in his native state in some part of manifestation of his internal principle and that the entire problem of limitation evil suffering and uncertainty is not god ordained but is the result of ignorance and it has been written that a truth shall make you free if you accept it provided that you know it and you note that the evolution of man's consciousness bring with it the acquisition of new powers and higher possibilities we find ourselves torn by confusion by conflict by affirmation and denial We also find ourselves torn by emotional congested by fear by congeal and by pride. We are afraid of the universe in which we live, suspicious of people around us, uncertain of salvation of our own soul. All these things negatively react and cause physical disorder. Nature seems to await our comprehension of her, and since she is governed by immutable law, the ignorance of which excuses no man from their effect the bondage of humanity must be a result of our ignorance of the true nature of reality the stars of nature may be filled with good but this good is locked to the ignorance the key to this door is held in the mind of the intelligence working in accordance with the universal law through experience man learns what is really good and satisfying what is truly worthwhile as his intelligence increases and his capacity to understand the subtle law of nature grows he will gradually be set free as he learns the truth the truth will automatically set him free when we learn to trust the universe we shall be happy prosperous and well We must learn to come under the divine government and accept the fact that nature's table is ever filled. Never was there cosmic famine. The finite alone has wrought and suffered. The infinite lies stretched in a smiling repose. 
God is always good. He has never failed any, any one of us. And I'm sure we all had something to eat today. We have a shelter and we have something to put on. God has never failed one of us. No matter what our emotional storm or what our objective situation may be, there is always something hidden in the inner being that has never been violated. We may stumble, but always there is that internal voice for us by whispering within our ears, that thing which causes the eternal quest, that thing which sings and sings. This is the thing itself. And let me recapitulate. There is that thing within every individual that partakes of nature. That thing that comes within you in a blink of thought. That thing which is of universal wholeness. And in so far, it's a prayer. And that thing is from God. That is the meaning of Emmanuel. The meaning of the word of Christ. There's that thing within us which partakes the nature of the divine being. And just to let you know that I'm not a theologian, but I know that the truth will set anyone free, anyone who can hear the truth and hold it to the heart. And since it partakes of the nature of the divine being, we are divine. And that thing reacts according to our belief. And it is immutable law, subject to the use of the least among us. No respecter of any person, young or old, black or white, male or female, a child or an adult, it doesn't respect no one. It is bound to respect everyone and respect no one. So you cannot bound it or you cannot have it with respect to greed. Our soul will never change or violate its own nature. All the denying of its own will never change it. All the affirming of it will never make it any more than it is. But since it is what it is, and walking the way it is, it is working, it appears to each through his belief. It is done unto each one of us as we believe. The difference is your belief. If you believe it can work for you, then you can be happy. And in the end, we will say, then, that in spirit, man is one way God. But what is the great law of the universe? If we are really one with the whole, we must be one with the law of the whole, and as well as one with the spirit of the whole. If we try to find something difficult to grasp, then we shall never grasp it because we shall always think of it as being incomprehensible. The mind which we discover within us is the mind that governs everything. This is the thing itself and we shall recognize its simplicity.